you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another weeknight edition of Poolside Cigar Reviews with Kirk. On these weeknights, I like to come at you and let you know what I'm pairing, what I'm smoking, and just in general, what's on my mind. And uh, today, I am oh, I'm about halfway through a Cuban Press CAO Italia. There's a... Um, if you keep your eyes open, I don't know how available they are online, but I think they're still available certain places. You can find a 12-pack of these CAO Cuban presses. Uh, it comes in a little cardboard box. It's it's, it's fancier than it needs to be. Um, but uh, you get 12 CAO Cuban presses. You get three Italias, three Brazilias, three MX2s, and three LX2s. And um, I wasn't a huge fan of the MX2 and the LX2. You might be. I don't know. Uh, but I really like the Italia and the Brasilia. So to me, it was worth it. Plus... You know, these are only maybe four and a half by, so hard to judge the ring gauge on a Cuban press. I'm going to say four and a half by 48 maybe, um, which is a great stick for me on weeknights. I'm always looking for smaller sticks. You know, even Robustos are a little bit too big. So like a short Robusto, um, Petite Coronas, Corona, that's really, that's my preferred smoke. Not only because I like smaller ring gauges, but... I just don't have all the time in the world to smoke a cigar. When I can get a good deal on some smaller cigars, it's the way to go. Because for some reason, all the deals I see in the stores or online, it's always, it's always the Churchills or like the Gordos, like the six by sixties. And man, I just don't have time to smoke a Churchill or a Gordo. And the Gordo is really not my thing. 60 ring gauge. If you like it, more power to you. Smoke what you like. Uh, for me, I don't like the mouthfeel, and I tend to, I don't like the flavors uh, as much. Um, but for me, the big put off for the 6x60 is one, the time that it takes to smoke, and two, you know, I can't, uh, I can never seem to get a 60 ring gauge to burn that well, and burn is important for me. For me to enjoy a cigar, I don't want to have to worry about it. Like, I haven't had to touch this up yet. I'm getting a little. A little finger burning weird, but I have not touched this up, and to me that that plays a big role into my satisfaction of a cigar. I'm happy with a cigar if I don't have to touch it up. Um, scotch I'm drinking tonight is the old throwback, the uh, the Glen Kirk. Um, I won't lie, I bought this scotch because it had my name on it. Um, it's cheap, seventeen, eighteen bucks. Another great reason to buy it. Um, it's actually it's a single malt. It's an eight year old space side single malt, and it's not half bad. Uh, I don't know where the heck they get their tasting notes from because if if you see this in a store and you read the tasting notes, it's nothing like the tasting notes. It talks about peat. There's no peat in this at all. Um, but uh, but still a pleasant enough scotch and certainly uh, worth a gander for seventeen eighteen bucks a bottle. I've only heard from one, one other person who's actually tried this, and they had, I think, the same impression that I have, is that, hey, it's a pretty solid $18 bottle of scotch. and um, But that kind of plays into a little bit of what I wanted to talk about tonight when I say, you know, what's on my mind. And that's... Um, when it comes to cigars, and I'll go ahead and speak for Scotch too, because I've actually been drinking, I've been smoking cigars for a little over two years. Um, scotch, I've been drinking, actually single malts, probably not that long, four years maybe. But, um, you know, I've been drinking whiskey really since before I was, before I was of legal age. I don't know, I, I if, if I if I was honest with you, I think I, I, I drink scotch and smoke cigars because it was something that I, I found interesting and wanted to develop a taste for. Um, you know, cigars, I will say, I liked from the get-go. You know, when I started smoking cigars, it was no problem. Now, I did, uh, when I was younger, you know, I smoked cigarettes off and on. I chewed tobacco off and on, so I was kind of familiar with tobacco. But cigars blew my mind, and since I started smoking cigars... I haven't touched or wanted to touch cigarettes or snuff or anything. It kind of, kind of grosses me out a little bit. To tell the truth, 
But um, but anyway, the the reason you smoke cigars or drink whiskey, whiskey was certainly. It took me. It, it really. It was. It was an effort. I love whiskey now. I genuinely do. I really like whiskey. Um, it took me a long time to learn, and partially because I think I went about it wrong. I, I started by drinking um, cheap bourbon, and I choked down a lot of bottles of cheap bourbon for, for quite a few years, just trying to develop a taste for it. And it wasn't until I started drinking Irish whiskey that I actually found genuine enjoyment in a, in a glass of uh, whiskey. And now that I've moved on from that and found single malt scotch, I, I love this stuff. I really do. But I won't pretend that it wasn't an acquired taste. I really had to work at it because I, th I think it's just that machismo of I somewhere in my mind, I think that real men drink whiskey and smoke cigars, which um, which isn't true. Not true. So, uh, if you know, uh, Real men, sure. Some real men drink whiskey and smoke cigars, and some real men don't. It's certainly not a requirement. Talking too much. But, uh... There's a lot of more important things that come with being a man than, uh, than drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, that's for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and take the band off here. But the, you know, the main thing, if I can eventually get to it, that's on my mind tonight that I wanted to share with you. Um, let's slide it off. How about that? Um, what I wanted to talk about was not missing the point. And, um, you know, I review cigars, and I talk about whiskey. I don't generally review whiskey. But uh, I share the stuff that I really like, you know, and I, I share what what pointers I have on how to enjoy it, but uh, my cigar went out. But, um, you know, as a reviewer, I think I started reviewing because I found reviews interesting. I, I, I enjoy cigars and I wanted to share my enjoyment. And I've also just, I like cigar reviews and eventually said, hey, I want to do that myself. But, you know, when you start to really get into cigars, and you're reading a lot of reviews, and you're reading the blogs, and you're on uh, Puff, or you're on Brothers of the Leaf, or you're on Stogie Friends, um, there's a lot of pretension, I think, out there. There's, there's a lot of know-it-all cigar reviewers and smokers and everyone is certainly entitled to their opinion um, and if you want to have a strong opinion that's okay but I would suggest number one that you understand that anybody who says anything about a cigar says anything about whiskey it is an opinion so always take it as such it's an opinion um, trying to keep my cigar lit here. Number two, that applies to you as well, and it applies to me. Keep your opinions in check, man. It's just an opinion. Don't, uh, you know, just because 60 ring gauge cigars aren't necessarily for me, doesn't mean that they're bad. I don't enjoy the bad burn, but if, you know, you might not mind touching it up and Mess, maybe that's part of your enjoyment is just the trying to get it to burn well and you like you might like babying a cigar a little bit um, and and you know really working at it and getting it to burn well or making sure it's stored properly or rotated or moved throughout your humidor so it's just perfect and get it ready to smoke if that's part of your enjoyment man that's great and if you and if you like the feel and the look and the taste of a big ring gauge cigar man that's more power to you don't, uh, I guess it all boils down to don't take these things too seriously, man. Because at the end of the day, it's a cigar. It's a glass of whiskey. And, uh, and you should just be enjoying it. You know, smoke what you like. Drink what you like. Don't take it too seriously. Be lighthearted about it. Um, you know, if you, if you smoke a bad cigar... 
man, you were smoking a cigar, and that's pretty freaking cool. And, uh, you know, especially if you have the time to smoke a cigar, that should be cherished. cherished. If you have the resources to grab a cigar, you should be thankful for that, too, because, you know, not everybody's in the position to do that. So, um, you know, smoke what you like, drink what you like, and don't let anybody say anything else about it. I mean, a lot of people will show off their Opus X collections, their Liga collections, and it's this, you know, you see a lot of videos on YouTube of, you know, humidor tours, and, you know, I've done that a little bit. You know, I, I try to be more, I think with my humidor videos, more instructional just on how to maintain a humidor. Um, but, uh, you know, just because you don't have a dozen Opus X's in your humidor doesn't mean that you're not enjoying cigars, you're not, a, you're not serious about cigars, or, frankly, I, personally, my opinion, again, my opinion, is it's not that, I mean, if you get too serious about cigars to the point that it, you know, become, it can become a stressor. Don't, don't let it become a stressor. Cigars should be a stress reliever, in my opinion. And the same thing with whiskey. Now, this cigar, I don't remember what I paid for it. I think I got that 12-pack for, I want to say under 40 bucks. I want to, I want to say these were in the 3 to $4 range when you average it out because actually I got these in a 40% off bin at my local uh, B&M, which keep your eyes open. That Always ask if anything's on sale or if they have a discount rack or anything. Because you're doing yourself a favor by getting a deal. And you're doing the B&M owner a favor by taking it off their hands so they can turn some stock over and get some new stuff in. So uh, don't feel guilty about buying off the 40% off rack. But um, you don't have to smoke expensive stuff. I guess that's the other thing on my mind. Lately I've had a lot of mediocre experiences with very expensive cigars. And uh, I've been super fortunate enough to um, have some great experience with some less expensive cigars. And I would put this in the less expensive range, but even cheaper than this. Uh, I did a video a while back where I got um, a box of Alec Bradley Max Brazils. And a bunch, and, a, and like a dozen other great Alec Bradley cigars. For like 70 bucks. I mean, all told, it was um, less than 3 bucks a stick. It was like 275 a stick. Something like that. Great deal. And I've been smoking those Max Brazil Coronas. I've had them in my humidor now for a good good two months. And, uh, boy, each time I grab one, they're just they're getting better. But Alec Bradley's, in my opinion, tend to take about three or four months to really kind of hit their stride. But, uh, at least when you order them online. But, um, man, they, this, Max Brazil's are nice. You know, I got some uh, Oliva Cezans for $3 a stick. Those are freaking awesome. Um, I finally had, uh, I ordered a five-pack of um, Diesel Hair of the Dogs. Uh, so this weekend, actually, I had my first one. I haven't had a Diesel before. The Hair of the Dog was my first. It's the, the Bellicoso. That was a good cigar. It was in the, uh, I would say... Mild to medium range. I don't know why they had them listed on their website as full bodied because they're not. But that's okay. Just because it's not full bodied doesn't mean it's not good. It was very flavorful. It, the burn was fantastic. I mean, that cigar was perfectly constructed. I've only had one, but the one that I had was great. And man, that burn line was just straight. I mean, it was as good as any Drew Estate or Oliva cigar I've had. I mean, it just burned perfectly. Tons of smoke. Great, great flavor. Awesome cigar, so also don't fall into that trap of thinking that if you're not smoking your Opus X's, your Liga Provadas, your Davidovs, that you're not you're not smoking the best cigars out there. Because I'll tell you what, price is not correlated with quality. I mean, I guess to a certain extent it is. You're probably gonna have a hard time finding a lot of really great dollar sticks that are consistent. You might, you know, grab a good one here and there. But um, when you get down into that dollar range, I think consistency becomes an issue. You can still get good flavors, and you can still get a good burn. Um, but you're not always going to get consistent flavors. Uh, more, really, the issue is going to be the consistent burn. Um, you're probably not going to get just consistent construction at that price range.
but in like the three to four dollar range, especially if you're shopping online, you can really get world class cigars for three to four bucks if you're if you're shopping online. Uh, and a B and M, you can get a world class cigar for six seven bucks, depending on what state you're in. You can. They're out there. They're great. And um, well, I wouldn't say this Scotch is world class. It's certainly very good. The scotch is ridiculously expensive. Um, it's just outrageous how expensive it is. Because it's so popular. People put a premium on that because it's fashionable. So, um, yeah, don't fall into the trap of thinking if you're not smoking the fashionable cigars or drinking the fashionable scotch that you can't still enjoy it. Because, you know, I'm, I'm drinking a... What do you get? I'd probably get maybe 12, 15... 15 drinks out of a bottle, so at 18 bucks, you're looking at a dollar 25 dram and a three, four dollar cigar. I'm as happy as can be, man. This is good stuff. So I know I've talked for a long time tonight. Hopefully, I kept you interested. If I did, please click the like button. You know, I always appreciate that. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Uh, I I promise if I if I if I see that you commented, I will uh, I will write you back. Um, you know, if, if you comment on an old video and it slips through the cracks and I don't see it, then I apologize. But my aim is to, is to reply to everybody. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll at least make that promise that if I see your comment, I will, uh, I will, I will write you back. And I do strive to see and read every comment. So, um, I really do. I do my due diligence on that end. But it's always good to be out here by the pool talking to you guys. And I hope you like listening to me. I really do because uh, I like sharing my thoughts. So if you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate it. Click that like button. You guys are great. And, uh, you know, if you want to see more videos, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, do it. Because I, uh, I I try to come at you and I try to leave my whatever, <laughs> whatever tidbits of wisdom I've... Uh, I've uh, compiled over the last couple of years in my experience of smoking and drinking. Mm. CEO Italia is a good smoke. If you haven't had it, it's interesting. There's something about that Italian wrapper. So this is the only cigar I've ever had that I'm aware of that has an Italian wrapper. And it does bring something a little bit different, but I like it. So I'll leave you guys with that. And, uh, you know, when you're drinking whiskey, don't drink too much. Sip on it. Appreciate it. One or two drams is all you need. So, uh, thanks a lot again. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. I do appreciate it. And uh, click that like and subscribe button if you, if you stuck it out to the end. I do appreciate it. And as always, I will leave you with my recommendation. Keep your feet in the pool, drink in your hand, and a cigar in your mouth. If you're like me, if you can do those three things, you'll be all right. Have a good one, guys. Great talking to you. Have a great week.